When a scientific lab writes and publishes a paper, we often take for granted the way the credited authors are ordered. What is often ignored is that the author order on a scientific paper tells a story about what that lab has decided to value. In this episode of Lab Life, we'll look at a way of determining author order that rethinks traditional academic hierarchies of power and seniority. A big part of the, the work in academia is to find ways to move forward against people who, who have been and have power and who've been in the academy for a very long time, which is one of the incredible things about what Max is doing is she's found just these ingenious strategical ways of advancing those things, of advancing those knowledge forces. In many ways I'm well received here because my students stick around and I have so many grants and my students are successful and we publish so much. And you know, so by the markers of traditional science, we're rocking here and people are like, what's your secret? And the secret is, don't be an asshole. So first, can I see a show of hands of who, re or a show of fingers up, of who read the, the paper? Oh my God, awesome. So usually the way a lab, a normal scientific lab, will determine author order is that the lab principal investigator, or PI, not private eye, uh, unfortunately, is who's the boss, who would be me, generally, decides. Because we know so much, and we know what is best, and so we decree it to be so, and it is so. Our lab uh, does a couple things different. Number one, everyone in the lab is part of those decisions, even if they weren't on the paper. So the reason we have people who aren't authors in these meetings is a couple of things. First of all, you're a witness and you keep us honest. If you see someone stepping back and being really modest and you think they should maybe step forward and, and own their connections, that's your job as guests and fellow lab members to advocate for them and hold them up. Everyone, so far so good? All right, so the spirit of the paper. The process of determining author order begins with talking about the spirit of the paper, brainstorming some of its unique characteristics, which will be listed in the first column. This will help frame everything that happens next. In the middle column, there's the labor that went into the paper. And finally, on the right, the people who did that labor. So people who read the paper, including people who are guests, um, as well as people who are involved in the project. So everybody, hey everybody, what makes this paper different than other papers or this project different than other projects? Um, so thanks to everyone for having me here as a guest. And something that has struck me about this paper is about the spirit, I think, of it, as I can observe from the outside, is the amount of accountability work that people take on. This thing, when it circulates in the world, the work it does, the spirit it has, the heart it does, the, the shit it gets done, the stuff it leaves behind. What's the most important? Nadia, then Jesse. Uh, accountability. 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 I'm going to go with accountability as well. I'm going to go with generosity. And also say accountability. Put fingers up for accountability. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's also really important that we do a consensus so everyone has to agree. This is like voting, this tallying. When we do a tally, it doesn't mean, oh, the one with the most wins, done, dusted, moving on. Uh, it moves the conversation in a certain direction. Now with some insight as to the spirit of the paper, we move to the forms of labor involved in the making of the paper and evaluate their relative contribution. When we look at these forms of labor and when we think of new forms of labor, what that means is, we think about which ones do the work of accountability, because like some don't. Which ones are about putting in the colonial and anti-colonial uh, wrapping around things, and which ones are about generosity and gift giving. And those are the ones, those are the forms of labor that'll, that'll be the most important to this project, because they contribute the most to the heart and the soul. Sample collection. One, two, three. Uh, collegial support. One, two. Analysis of the numbers. Analyzing the colonial and anti-colonial stuff. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Writing, editing and reading. Organizing people. Literature review. One. Uh, checking in and communication. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got um, priorities that were set earlier around accountability. And that, what that does is then it brings into relief uh, the kind of labor that's done. So some then, as Max was saying earlier, float to the top or become kind of slightly more relevant. But that's not to say that any of the elements here um, are not important because any single one of them 
that, that falls off, this paper then uh, collapses. Analysis and writing. Okay, Max, Christina, and Alex did that. The central principle of determining author order is that people get credit for their labor and intellectual production. Mary Jane, does Rebecca provide collegial support? All the time. No. I would expect nothing less. You can't do science without collegial support. By connecting each form of labor to each individual who performed that work, we're able to visualize the amount and importance of labor performed, which helps us to then organize the individuals into an initial list of clusters based solely on labor. Once this list is in place, we begin to talk about equity in author order. A lot of people use equality and, and, and equity interchangeably. We do it equitably. What we do now is we say, okay, how should we order this? And we no longer talk about labor. What we say now is like, okay, who are the folks that are systematically forced out of STEM? This is, uh, uh, this is where uh, equity and social location comes in. Equality means treating everyone exactly the same. It's essentially a math problem. How do I make sure you guys are treated so fairly that there is no difference between how you are treated, right? Men sh women should be treated like the way we treat men, right? Uh, equity starts from a very different premise, and that's that people start from very different starting locations. So if one of you is an undergraduate and one of you is a graduate, the undergraduate goes first, because that undergraduate does not have the ability to start a new project the way a graduate student can. They might never be on a paper again. Or let's say you're tenured, right? You've got massive job security in university and someone else is junior. Junior goes first, right? Because junior needs that. Now we have Barbara Vaughn to Christina. Maybe I can make your job easier. Mm -hmm. Barbara and I are willing to drop down. Is that okay with you, Christina? You're rising up, you're rising up. Can't stop it, can't stop it, here you go. Barbara, Vonda, and Evan. Now we haven't talked about Barbara versus Vonda. Barbara first, please. She's a young scientist, you know, she needs to make a mark. Fingers up, consensus on the box. Yes, gold star. So when I get hate mail, that's what I get hate mail about, about how unfair it is confusing, of course, equity and equality. That's not equal. Hell no, it's not. It better not be, because if it is, we're not doing justice. We're doing a math problem. And math is easier than justice. Charlotte was uh, our high school Y student. Charlotte is Mi'kmaq. Charlotte did a lot of infrastructural and organizational work that normally never gets credited in science. Charlotte, are you still in high school? Where's Charlotte? I just graduated. Congratulations. So I'm going to advocate for uh, Charlotte first. Does that sound OK to folks? Can I see fingers? That's pretty cool. That doesn't happen very often, that a full professor white guy who organizes Arctic things and your high school intern are next to each other. I think that's a win. So people have this problem with this idea that people might be getting credit they don't deserve. They deserve it and they're due, right? Because everything else has been crappy so far or they're systematically disenfranchised in other ways. So of course they get it. This is very new. I've, I've been involved in a lot of papers. I've never done this. It's, uh, it's awesome it's, to see how it, uh, how it all plays out. You have to be committed to the process though. And a lot of people are like, I'm just happy to be anywhere. You know who those people are? Women. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Who wrote this paper? Max, Alex, and Caitlin. I would say Max ahead, for sure. The Max and Alex and Caitlin would be good. I think that sounds like a good order. Max first and then Alex and Caitlin. I agree with the order. I'm Max, Alex, and Caitlin. I don't disagree with this order. No, no offense to Caitlin or Alex, but Max, I, I've always thought you were the lead on this, on this paper. And even in papers where I also think I'm the lead, I don't, we don't start that way. Um, and like you said, it's when people recognize you as a lead that you become a lead, not to demand that you're a lead. So that's what this process does for us. Okay, so what this means, so this is our author order. Isn't that cool? Uh, what this means is that, first of all, all everyone is going to get this list and the final paper. So this list in this order will be on the on the final draft and it will be circulated to everyone and everyone has to consent to, yes, I want to be on this paper in this way and in this order. Okay, well, thank you everyone for being involved. As you can see, this process cannot actually go with a solo or even a small group. Uh, so thank you for being part of it. I just want to thank you for the learning experience. This is uh, something new for me and uh, um, interesting as it kind of progresses. When we talk about scientific papers, um, very kind of secretive and people are very cut third in some fields, but I really appreciate how this could be an open, honest and like really collaborative process to talk about 
what authorship is. Thank you all for this learning opportunity. I feel like I learned a lot and I'm very grateful. The work we're, we're really doing together, a lot, a lot of us, is really a, a call for others to do similar things wherever they, they love and learn and teach and, and do their work. We ask that, that all of us keep thinking about how we can do the same kind of thought, the same kind of, and have the same kind of commitment and, and, and bring the same sort of knowledge and spirit and, and, um, and work into where, wherever we are. Thank you.